let's see how you can add custom tooltips to your blocks and items. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, first of all, I can tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom tooltip both to a block as well as an item, basically in, let's say, three different ways. Although they're basically all of the same way, just in sort of different places. So when it comes to custom tooltips, it's actually fairly straightforward on how to add them. The first step is that you usually want a custom block or a custom item class, but the third tooltip we're going to add actually will show you how you can do it without either of them. Let's first of all start with our magic block over here that obviously has a custom block class associated with it. And here we literally just want to overwrite the append tooltip method. You can see there you go. I'm basically selecting this, pressing tab to autocomplete it, and there we have it. Now, inside of this, you have a as a parameter the tooltip right here. This is a list of texts, and literally, you can just add text to them, and those will be displayed as tooltips. So we can say tooltip.add, and then we can say text.translatable. This is going to give us a text that will be translated via this key. So we're going to add a key, for example, tooltip.tutorialmod.magic underscore block dot let's say tooltip. There you go. And now this key right here of course, has to be translated, and this has to be translated via the en underscore us json file, or if you want to support other languages, you can do so too. So what I can do is I can simply select this over here, including the quotation marks, I can go into the en underscore us json file, and I can, for example, say this block is very, 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 very magical, right? There you go. This seems a little bit boring. How about we put some like color into it? And we can do this with formatting codes. The formatting code is this paragraph symbol. Now, because I have the German keyboard, the paragraph symbol is readily available for me to type. I know that on some other keyboards it is not. I'll, well, I mean, either you can literally just like Google paragraph symbol and you should find it. Otherwise, it's also available in the in the um, GitHub repository, right? You can, in theory, copy it over from there. So you should be fine. And I'll also link a great wiki article on formatting codes because that is quite useful. So in this case, the paragraph nine is going to then make everything after it turn blue until you get to the paragraph R, which is going to be sort of the resetting um, sort of, you know, formatting code. And that means that this magical over here is going to be turned blue. Pretty awesome indeed. If you want multiple lines in your tooltip, literally just add a second tooltip and that is going to add a line break. Obviously, those shouldn't be the same, right? You would have then a dot two or something like that. And then there you go. But yeah, that is actually already a tooltip added to the magic block. Very straightforward. Now, the same thing we can do with a custom item. So let's, for example, go to the chisel item right here. And here, let's do the same thing. We're going to append the tooltip method right here. So append tooltip. And here, though, I want to do a little bit so, like something a little bit different. Here, what I want to do is I want you to be able to hover over the chisel item. And then it's it displays Press shift for more information. And then when you hold down shift, that is when you actually see the information. That is a thing that a lot of different mods do. You've probably seen this previously. Mechanism does it, I know. And I, I mean, there's probably like a bunch of other mods that do this. And it's super freaking simple, but it adds just a little bit more to everything. And also, if you have a lot of text when holding down shift, like as in you want to describe a lot of stuff, then it does make sense to do this. Now, the way to do it, very straightforward. An if statement, if screen dot has shift down, then we're going to do something. And then an else statement where we'll do something else. Now, has shift down obviously means that we have shift pressed down. So we're going to say tooltip.add text.translatable. And here the key is going to be tooltip.tutorialmod. And this is going to be the chisel. And then let's say dot shift underscore down because we know, well, this is when we have the shift down pressed. And we're just going to copy that translatable over here, the entire thing, right? Tooltip.add. And then here we're just going to do chisel normally. And there you go. Uh, just make sure to, when it comes to the keys, obviously you can choose whatever you want. Make sure to, I, I rec recommend doing tooltip dot and then your mod ID and then basically whatever description, right? In this case, I do the chisel because that's the name of the item. And then here shift down so that I know that it's shift down. You can, of course, go with any other convention in terms of naming scheme, but that's going to be fine. Let's actually copy this over as well. And we're going to have this one and then just duplicate this once. And here, of course, having this without shift down. So without the shift down means that you have to press it. So there's going to be press and then we're going to have an 
uh, paragraph E, shift paragraph R for more information. Right, so there's going to be press shift for more information. It's also going to be colored in over here via, once again, the formatting codes. And then when you have shift down, you can say this chisel or this item chisels blocks into bricks. Something like that. You know, something like that is going to be okay. And that is going to be all you really need in this case. And that's going to be really freaking cool. Like I said, you're going to hover over this. You hold shift down and then you can see this text instead. And now one last thing, like I said, this time we required a bl custom block class. We required a custom item class. However, in theory, what you can also do is you can use an anonymous class, right? So an anonymous class, if you don't know what that is, highly recommend it to brush up on your Java just a little bit. I did talk about that in the, in specifically the Java introduction, both the old one and the new one. And this is really cool because what we can do is, let's say for the cauliflower right here, right after the new item, we can simply put in the curly brackets. And now between those curly brackets, and this is going to act like we've just extended the item class. Really freaking cool. So in here I can type append tooltip and you can see it suggests this to me and I can literally just overwrite this and I can say tooltip dot add text dot translatable. And once again, I'm going to do tooltip dot tutorial mod. This time we'll call the flower dot tool tip. Let's say there we go. And that's going to be fine. Once again, of course, taking the key over here, control C to copy it over. And I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to say this is delicious. There you go. And that is pretty much all we need to do. Now, as you can see, this is how easy it is. Now you can do these things like overriding this uh, any type of method with an anonymous class in basically with any item or whatever you so choose to do. And this is obviously useful if you have like one or two items that have a specific thing that you want to do, but you don't really want to make a custom item class for each one of those, right? Because at some point, it does get a little bit tedious if you like imagine for every item you want to add a tooltip and you have to make a custom item class for each of them. It would clutter up your item classes quite fast, right? Like, I mean, it, it just is not necessary. You know, if you only have something like this, then absolutely an anonymous class totally works. But yeah, those are basically sort of the three ways to add tooltips. Once again, once with a block class, once with a custom item class and once with an anonymous class here in this case. And of course, all of them, I always highly recommend using the translatable over here. Then the tooltips can also be translated to another language. But with that done, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, I'm back in Minecraft and let's take a look. First of all, the magic block. And you can see this block is very, very magical. Exactly. And the chisel will press shift for more information. I'm going to do exactly that. And you can see this item chisels blocks into bricks. So I can hold down shift and I'm going to get that. That is absolutely amazing. And of course, the cauliflower, well, that is delicious as you can see. So that is really freaking awesome. And, you know, it just adds, you know, one more layer to being able to give the player some amount of information and or feedback for certain things. And yeah, I mean, specifically the press shift for more information and then it changing. That is always a thing that's really freaking cool. But there you go. That is custom tooltips added to Minecraft. Awesome. As always, of course, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom tags. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.